but is there a point in time when we could say um, that it won't affect our lives anymore and we can go back to how it was before the pandemic hit? Or is there no chance that we will ever go back to where we were before the pandemic? Yeah, I, I um, you know, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm trying to be optimistic about it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just see it as, as something that we're going to have to live with. Uh, you know, it, our, our, our lives are changing, you know, so, uh, and this is going to be something that we're going to have to deal with in either this case or in a mutation or, um, you know, as we get, I mean, really when we have the vaccines, that will really tell us like how well we are able to uh, fight against it and go back to like what we may call normal living. But I think, um, I don't think it's ever really going to be the, the same as before. Um, it's, it's, we're, we're going to have to continue to live with this. And, and then of course, brace ourselves for newer versions of other viruses and so, so we're, we got, we were in, we we're literally entered a new world of biological warfare where, with, whether it's man-made or not, we have right. to live with the fact that where the world that we knew of is not coming back. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and like like I was showing earlier, like when uh, H one N one came out, you know, it, it you know it's it. it it, it was severely impacting people either just from how sick they got from getting it or, or the mortality rate being very high. But they were also able to come out with a vaccine within nine months, right? So, and also people were able to self-quarantine a lot more effectively because it was, tr it was much more transparent. So, yeah, and, and Asia is used to self-quarantining. I mean, Hong Kong has done this before. China has done this before. But also, I believe the, the U.S. response was so swift that the CDC team flew to where the base was and they helped, the scientists helped create um, procedures that would stop the disease from spreading. Yeah. The thing is that if you go to the base of the disease and stop it, stop it from spreading versus when you know you allow it to come in and then try to mitigate the outcome i think that is a strategy failure from our end of, of a public health failure for sure and not having enough experts on team to really do it right. is the second strategy failure mm -hmm. however what what really is interesting over here is that some countries have effectively done it like new zealand is is taiwan is is a way forward mm -hmm. they've done it but they've seen some spike, spikes later, but they've gone and kind of worked around those spikes and kind of kind of led their economies back. Do you see that happen in, in America at all? Well, coming back from the, all of this and what that looks like, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, the, again, it, it's changing, right? So like even from, um, you know, working from home, um, you know, how that's affecting, like, com what, like, you know, looking at commercial real estate, you know, in the areas, uh, what, it, like restaurants, people, um, you know, doing travel, you know, it's like, there's a lot of industries, you know, and maybe this goes to also, you know, like what, what our economy looks like in the future too. It's just like, there's a lot of companies that are making, you know, significant changes to how they do business and what areas they're, um, you know, they're concentrating in, you know, for example, even on the medical side, um, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, like, uh, Elizabeth Holmes is crazy, but, uh, you know, it would have like a test like that would have been really valuable to people just like, you know, a home test, take a prick of a sample of your blood and you don't have to go in the hospital and you can get tested for everything. So the medical markets, like looking at, you know, in the medical diagnostic field, this, like, for example, you know, we're looking at trying to bring more testing to the home, things that you could do sample collection at home, uh, point of care testing, you know, try, try to get people, you know, a, a, not, not having to go into areas where they don't have to, right? Um, and so I think there's, you know, you could see like a lot of market changes in those areas. Um, but then people working remotely, they're actually moving out of, you know, not paying the high rent in San Francisco and going out to suburban areas to, you know, uh, where the rents are a lot lower and they can work from home and don't have to worry about their Bay Area commute, you know. 
true, but but then there is also because you spoke about you know getting the tests home and, and the number of tests in the market are, are big, and not only here, every country. Um, the market, uh, the, the production of tests has been rapid now, mm -hmm. um, but but there is this entire distrust with not only the way CDC dealt with it, but it, but but even FDA clearances. There 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 are, there's enough evidence for us to say that this has become a political game. This is so politically motivated, like. You know the uh, the entire case of um, uh, the cocktail of drugs that Mr. Trump took uh, a couple of days back, yeah. and uh, and now Regeneron Pharmaceuticals wants yeah. emergency FDA clearance for something that they derived in, and, and and over over a period of 30, 40 years, uh, you know, were were immortalizing in in their labs uh, from fetal cells in in Netherlands, right? right. So 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 given the given the ability of politicians to 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 manipulate all of this yeah. uh, there is this entire sense of what do we trust in the end do yeah. we trust science the way the the way it's presented to us right now where are the real scientists and i'll give you another example the the doctor out of stanford was up again in news he did it once before and then a couple of days back he again says oh home quarantining doesn't work you've got to get out so, so where are these politically motivating, uh, mo motivated uh, stories coming from? And this is leaving a normal person so confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, there's you know like, you know, I guess an example is um, you know like we were touching on for the FDA. It's like um, you know FDA has been criticized in the past of letting tests out too quickly, letting, letting drugs out too quickly, then it's, you know, uh, then you're, now you're taking too long. Here's a, here's a cure and you're, you know, it's, it's taking forever to become available. I have to need to go down to Mexico or some other country to get, you know, the drugs that I need because it hasn't gone through the FDA. So there's, there's obviously like a, a delicate balance there, you know, both as a consumer too, that you want something that's definitely going to work. Um, I mean, I think the, the FDA is kind of, they, they have reacted, let's say, properly in one sense of allowing this, you know, emergency use to allow tests to come on the market. But, um, but we also have to be, you know, leery that, you know, there are, you know, diagnostic companies out there that have been doing this for years and know how to get these tests out. But then there's also these smaller companies that now have a huge opportunity to just get something out in the market, you know? And so there's a, there's a real concern, you know, from that standpoint of like, how good are these tests? Um, it's also going to be very questionable on how many people are going to trust taking a vaccine that maybe has had limited testing. Um, like you said, you know, the, the whole political world is so, you know, somebody paying off somebody else. And it's just like, who owns stock in that drug that they were able to promote on, you know, that the president's taking and everything else, you know? So, so things definitely get very, you know, confounded when you're trying to sift through, you know, what, what was the motivation or the background of some of these. So, I mean, for, so for me, like, you know, I trust the big players, you know, the, like, so I would probably, you know, be more comfortable, let's say taking a, a vaccine from Pfizer than some, you know, startup company that, you know, was in some other, some other area. Same, same thing with the diagnostics, you know, um, ensuring that it's from a reputable company that has had experience doing this because um, the amount of data that was actually required just to get some of these tests on the market is was very minimal. And even if they pass that stage, you know, now they're making millions of these tests. Do they really know how to do that? Are they controlling every lot of material that's going out? And so, you know, we even heard, uh, you know, even Trump was kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, giving uh, Abbott some bad press saying like, hey, we were using their point of care test, you know, to test everybody coming in and they were negative and the test missed some people. So now there was positive people, you know, that's how you know some of the infection. Now they moved on to a different test. You oh, know, by, so. by the way, by the way, they lied about the fact that he was getting tested every day. He wasn't. <laughs> so, 
So there's so much, there's so much of garbage coming out of, uh, yeah, for you sure. know, a, a Reno White House is, is the biggest, um, you know, hot spot yes. for COVID infection. It has more COVID, COVID patients than some countries put together. Yeah. Well, so, again, they're not wearing masks. So, I mean, what do you plus, expect? And, 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 and even when Mr. Trump knew that he knew that he had the infection, he went for to 100 people um, fundraising event in New Jersey. So so we're, we're looking at a totally different dynamic with spreaders and super spreaders. However, you know, even the bigger companies, to your point that we should trust the bigger companies, hey, New England Journal of Medicine also got scammed with all of this. Yeah. So, so where, I mean, we are, we, we are in a situation, we're in a world where, where if a, an individual does not have the capacity to sift information, they're definitely going to die today. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> to a great extent, right? Because, because, because wrong information, conspiracy theories, and, and politically motivated information, um, yeah. It's, it's going to kill people. It's, it that, has that, to kill people. And that's what's been probably most difficult for us, like science type people that, you know, is like, is, is like you said, is, is there, there's so much data and there's so much conflicting data and, you know, and being part of that world, it's like always about, you know, study design, you know, I mean, statistics can tell you anything, you know, it's just like, you know, they could probably show you that, you know, redheads might have a higher percentage of, you know, getting COVID than others if you were looking at the data a certain way, you know, or something. So, um, you know, it's, so it's it really, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's been very difficult to sort through, like, where the reputable data is coming from and the study design. I mean, you can, you know, scientists can cherry pick the people that they're using in a study and the data so easily. And then, like you said, also the, the political motivations and other things that might be, you know, fueling a direction. Yeah, it's a scary time right now. It's kind of like all coming up at, at once for all this. So Tony, um, as a scientist, I mean, where do you get, where do you get your data from? Because, uh, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, you, you have an edge actually compared to the, uh, to the, 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 you know, the common uh, yeah. person. Uh, if we're done with the slides, can you sort out? The non-slide view, please, sorry. Sure. Because we're also recording. Hey, Steph, Stefan, could you ask that question again so that I can edit? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Tony, as a scientist, where do you source your data from? Where, where, what are your trusted sources of information? Yeah, so um, I, I like going to the CDC. Uh, I think a, a lot of it is, I, I like I would say that's probably my, single point uh, of truth for a lot of things. Um, I will go, I will trust data coming from reputable, uh, like like um, uh, research institutes, like, like a Stanford or Johns Hopkins. Um, so, um, so I would also look at like where the data is coming from. Like it was brought up, I used to think, you know, you know, New England Journal of Medicine or, or certain other journals would have an advantage, but it's just too easy to, to dupe them. I think these other, and same thing with the companies, right? Here, here are reputable companies that have done diagnostic testing for their entire, you know, that's their, that's their business. Um, I would trust them over a, you know, a small startup that, you know, came up with something. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I would say WHO and, uh, and, and CDC are probably, you know, for maybe even specifically this audience is probably, are probably places to go. Anything you hear on, uh, on the news or anything else, you know, they're just trying to, even, even nowadays, like you get the, uh, the titles of, you know, to try and stimulate you to read it, you know, they're just like so off base and crazy. All click baits. All click baits. Yeah, yeah, that's marketing and advertising right there. But 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 you know, uh, you know. So 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 for the longest time, there was so much confusion around all of this, and then uh, the entire data about side effects. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have longer lasting side effects. They some of them reporting brain damage. Some of them reporting that they can't see properly. I mean, there's so much data around side effects. What is what is what are the major side effects that we should take into? consideration yeah. if any of us does contract COVID. 
Yeah, so um, so for this specific particular virus, so if you look at what people are at most high risk, right? So these are people with heart conditions, um, uh, blood disorders, like uh, especially that affect your oxygen levels. So like people with like thalassemias or sickle cell, uh, smokers, um, people with diabetes. So if you look at like basically anything related to like oxygen transport in your body or lung disease type diseases. Um, those are the people at most high risk of, you know, of dying or having high, you know, more complications. In that case, shouldn't there be a national strategy about going first testing those people so that, mm -hmm. you know, that's what India did. They didn't have enough tests. So they first went to hospitals and tested people the respiratory diseases, and then yeah. they picked up, the, they, they were actually able to stop the mm -hmm. initial uh, spread doing yes. that. Because again, those are the higher risk people. So, yeah. but, but then there's, but then there are other, like, let's say, you know, sub conditions, like, you know, pre diabetes, you know, um, people that might have like asthma, but not like, you know, severe asthma. So those people, I think, you know, going forward there, it's going to have some kind of long-term damage to those systems in your body and how they might manifest themselves later as, as people age or have other triggering events. Um, I think, I think that's where the trends would go. I think for looking at like what long-term, you know, effects uh, the virus infection might have for some, certain people. But, but, but what are the long-term effects that we see right now? What is going on? Yeah, that, um, obviously it's, it's, it's too new to <laughs> understand, but I, I guess that's where I'm, I'm looking at like the predictive, the predictive nature of it, like of what systems are being affected now and like what, you know, so people at higher risk of cancer, uh, probably more in the lung and blood type disorders, because that's the nature of the viral attack. So what happens if this happens again, which we know will? We have to act quickly in quarantine and hope the scientists get the vaccinations uh, up and running as, as quickly as possible. But, but you yeah. know, that's it. But that's a normal one and a half, two year cycle every time. Well, I mean, and that's where I think, you know, I mean, now, like, you know, they, they're on a pretty short cycle, you know, of you know, comparatively, I think like hopefully that some vaccines will make it through the end of the year. Um, when we're looking at flu, it's also, you know, um, you know, they have predictive models of like what flus might come in the future to be able to probably give you some more initial preventive, you know, effects of, of getting, you know, sicker. So I think, you know, I think that's probably where we have to like start, you know, I think, uh, the uh, vac you know, vaccine companies will probably start you know, transitioning to that of being having other predictors uh, and trying to head off things and having these vaccines almost available before it really hits. So, um, so they, they're doing that with flu. And I think you know, now it's, this is a new flu <laughs> really for, for how, how, to, how to predict it. So I could see this also you know, being part of the normal flu vaccine in the future, but also for them to have predictive models on how it might mutate and how we can gain protect protection in the future until if the next thing get, comes. If we get the same virus strains, I mean, similar yeah. virus strains, not the yeah. same ever, but similar. But if we don't, then we're... Right. If the body sees it similar enough, that that's good enough for our immune system to have uh, a, a high response initially to it. So, um, and so, so I was I was watching Dr. Fauci at the New York uh, New Yorker festival, and uh, somebody asked him, "Will I ever be able to go out for a movie?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll take you out, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take you out probably after spring of next year." <laughs> exactly. So, so is that is that optimistic? You think you think that uh, there will be ever a a chance that I'll be sitting with somebody non-family? in a theater sitting right next to me is that ever going to happen again will i be going for a movie again i'm opti i'm optimistic that we'll we'll get to some back back to some sort of normalcy yeah 
Like now, 60, well, will you maybe plus, you might have to take under yeah. <laughs> two options. <laughs> now you might have on your uh, Apple Watch that you were tested and screened and allowed to enter that building, or you might have a temperature test before you go in that movie theater. You know, just by some infrared device. You know, but I'm optimistic there'll be some kind of normalcy of us to be able to interact on a more uh, social level. <laughs> So, so the reality of us having chips in our bodies and be able to be socially um, mobile is, is, is finally here, uh, <laughs> quite close to Neuralink as Elon is, 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 uh, is That's right. asking people to adapt to. But, yeah. but I guess we're, we're in the future where, you know, our, our body vitals will be on a chip in our body and finally we'll be able to you know gain access to to a place or gain access to a society or a, or a, or a community based on our vitals yeah reality how close how i many? think so two I years so. one year just just when the vaccine um, i'd say probably we'll be able like to plan well, the anti well it's almost available now right but uh but i think it's more of uh how people will view you know giving up you know, that, you know, information to the world and what benefit you have versus my personal information and, uh, you know, tracking, right? So, you know, this, this came before when, you know, when uh, with, you know, DNA analysis, right? And it's just like, I can tell if you're a high-risk person of cancer, it's like, you know, do you really want all that, you know, 23andMe yeah, okay. information available that now your insurance companies can get a hold of and like charge you three times because you're at a higher risk of getting cancer or, or some other disease, right? So it's uh so it's a payoff yeah. between not knowing and having the data out there. But you know, you could anonymize it for yourself. You don't have to be dumb enough to give your right name. Exactly. Once, <laughs> but at least you know you have it. So so, yeah. but, but then with chips in your body, that's a totally different because of the vitals yeah. you will need to, you, you cannot, you can only anonymize it to a certain extent, right? Yeah. And this sure. data might be available. And, and there was this, let's just debunk a conspiracy theory before we wrap <laughs> the session up. So there was this entire QAnon theory that uh, Bill Gates will eradicate the vaccinations that he's given people has 5G chips in it and it'll enter your body and transmit to cell towers. It's a QAnon conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And it's just not true for people who believe in QAnon. It's not true. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, nobody's, there's no swamp to drain. There is no human trafficking happening in the White House or it has happened any time earlier that that, that President um, uh, Trump is, is there to clean up uh, on your behalf. And if there is a swamp, the swamp, we don't know about it. And there's no evidence to it. Having said that, vaccinations do not have 5G connectivity in chips. And vaccinations do not inject chips in your body. Anything else that I missed out here? That vaccination do, vaccinations do when people don't know they do? Oh, if you're being vaccinated and you don't know? Is that? <laughs> yeah. It's but, in the water. <laughs> but but now you have you have capsules that can literally uh, be you know you have drugs your medicines that are robotic and they can enter your yeah. bloodstream. Uh, you can you can you, you can eat a capsule and they'll enter your bloodstream bloodstream through the stomach lining. You really yeah. don't need to be vaccinated anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you have robotic capsules now, come to think of it, yes? Yeah, a lot of great, great science advancements. Are they, how they affect us, right? It's like... And, and, and we're still sitting at home quarantining, despite... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. But we get the Zoom and we, we're adapting and we're trying to make the best of it, so... Yeah, because that's what we do as a human race. That's what we Whatever do. The situation we, there, we will adapt to make the best of it. Well, thank you, Tony. This was amazing. Stefan, is there a wrap-up question you want to ask that I might have missed out on? I think we uh, we need to hold raises. And uh, thank you, Tony. I really appreciate it. I mean, uh, uh, you're a very estimated colleague, and uh, I really uh, uh, trust you as uh, you know our 
head of uh, head of uh, uh, R&D. So we're uh, really, really happy that you could make it uh, today and uh, and uh, share basically your insights with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Lee. inviting this me. This was an absolute pleasure to have you here. And we're we're so we're, we're so lucky to have your expertise. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Be safe. Wear a mask.